our problem states. Identify the corresponding coefficient for each term in the chemical equation defined as, we have a chemical equation there, listed a uh, number of coefficients to use to fill in those blanks, and it states that the coefficients can be used more than once. So this is a type of problem that's going to make itself a permanent home on the FE exam. It's referred to as an alternative item type problem or an AIT problem. So as we always do, let's go ahead and identify what exactly we are being asked to determine in doing this particular problem. Now looking over the problem statement, it gives us some chemical equation. It gives us a list of coefficients and it asks us to identify where in the chemical equation these coefficients should be placed. Now without saying it specifically, we are being asked to balance a chemical equation that represents some chemical reaction given the information in the problem statement. Now this problem is designed to mimic what you could expect to see as a typical fill in the blank problem, requiring you to identify where there are blanks and use the coefficients, the labels, terms, or whatever we are given in this situation, that these are coefficients, to fill in, uh, fill in those blanks. Now remember that when reading these problems, we must take into account all the information that we are being presented and one key detail that could definitely make or break your answer on this problem is this. Coefficients can be used more than once. Now, under time conditions, this under non-time conditions, just watching this live stream, just watching this video, that's not a very big detail to catch. However, under time conditions, we're stressed out, and we might just overlook that. And if we're not going to catch that, we might force ourselves to fit all the coefficients into the equation which might not be possible. And as we will see in this problem, it's not possible. So we gotta read all the information, all the data we're given, and make sure that we fully understand the problem statement. Because that can make one simple quick problem into a difficult catastrophe where you'll get the wrong answer. We don't want that. The general formula for a chemical equation or how we should go about balancing one is not directly provided to us in the NCES reference handbook. That's version 9.4. However, it is of the utmost importance that we understand the fundamental concepts and the applications revolving around this subject independent of the NCES reference handbook. So let's start laying out a roadmap source, a step-by-step -step procedure that we will use, we will use every time we, we encounter a problem like this, whether it's AIT or not. Now this will be a four-step process, with the first step being to write out the chemical equation, and this will most likely already be done for you. But in the case that you are given a reaction in writing, first of all, sorry about that, but second of all, we're gonna to have to whittle it down into standard chemical form. Now the second step will be to balance the atoms in each element presented, both on the reactant and the product side. Step three will be to adjust the coefficients to ensure that they are whole numbers. And lastly, we will confirm the mass balance of the chemical equation with the coefficients that we inserted in during our work. Now let's get started with writing out the chemical equation. Now in some cases, and likely not on the FE exam, I can't imagine this occurring, we will need to identify all the reactants and the products of a chemical reaction and write their correct formulas on each side of the chemical equation, broken out as called for. Luckily, we are given the chemical equation to work with, so we do not need to worry about translating the nomenclature of this problem statement. So with that, we will just rewrite the chemi chem chemical equation that we are given and call it good. So let's go ahead and move to our second step. 
Now the second step calls for us to balance the atoms for each element. This is going to be the step that will require the most work. Here we will go element by element, atom by atom, first defining the current status and then establishing the coefficient that will create the balance for that element on each side of the equation. Note here that we can change the coefficients, the numbers preceding the elements formula, to whatever we want. We can play around with those coefficients, but we can't change the subscripts, the numbers within the chemical formulas themselves. As if we were, if we were to change the subs subscripts, we would actually change the identity of that substance and the chemical reaction would not exist or it wouldn't be the same in, in the way that is presented to us in the problem statement. We can't mess with the subscripts, but we will adjust the coefficients. So we will need though, with those subscripts, we have to keep those in mind because we will account for each subscript, subscript for each element to help us establish balance. So let's start with cobalt. Looking at the number of atoms for cobalt, we find that there is one cobalt atom in the reactants and two cobalt atoms in the product. This can be better illustrated like this. Now with two cobalts on the right side of the equation, we must add one on the left side to create that balance. And for me, I like to scratch them out. I like to write it out like this. So we added one cobalt on the left side. We can now see that there are two cobalts on each side. Next, we take a look at the number of atoms for hydrogen. Here we see that there are two hydrogen atoms in the reactants, as well as two hydrogen atoms in the products. Therefore, we can just scratch it out like this. Lastly, we take a look at the atom, number of atoms for oxygen. And for oxygen, we see that there is a single oxygen atom in the reactants, and we have three oxygen atoms in the products. Therefore, to establish balance between the oxygen atoms on each side of the equation, we must add another two oxygen items, atoms on the left side, the reactant side of the chemical equation. And this gives us something like this. So this is what our rough sketch of the balanced equation looks like. We will now need to roll up each atom one by one, establishing the proper coefficients in each position that will allow us to maintain this balance. It's important to know once again that we cannot, we can change the coefficients in front of the elements, but we can't mess with those subscripts of the chemical structure that represents the substances, as that would change, again, the chemical reaction we're working with. Also, because we have compound elements, we will need to assess how a coefficient for one atom affects the balance of that second unrelated atom and adjust for that as we are carrying out our balance efforts. So let's go ahead and start with cobalt. We see that we are going to need two cobalts on each side of the chemical equation for balance. This doesn't simply mean that we throw a two in front of each cobalt element. Instead, we must assess the structure of the subst substance that contains this cobalt atom on each side of the equation, and then we can go from there. Now on the left side of the original chemical equation, cobalt is presented in the reactants as a single atom. However, on the right side of the equation, cobalt has a subscript of two. Therefore, we can go ahead and roll up those atoms as such. As there now is a surplus of one cobalt atom in the product, we can use a coefficient of two for the cobalt in the reactants, resulting in a net sum of two cobalt atoms on each side of the equation. And this allows us to remove the additional cobalt atom that we scratched out and present the chemical equations as such. Let's now move on to the hydrogen atom. Now with two hydrogen atoms on the left side as well as the right side, 
of the chemical equation, right now everything is in balance. But since this atom is part of a compound element in the reactants, I'm not going to roll it up just yet until I see how that oxygen atom affects the element as a whole. So let's go ahead and move on to oxygen. We see that the, we are going to need three oxygens on each side of the chemical equation for balance. Again, this doesn't simply mean that we throw a three in front of each oxygen element. Instead, we must assess that structure of that substance, that atom, that contains this oxygen atom on each side of the equation and go from there. So on the left side of the original chemical equation, oxygen is presented in the reactants as a single atom, part of a compound element. However, on the right side of the equation, oxygen has a subscript of three. Therefore, we can go ahead and roll up those atoms as such. As there is a surplus of three oxygen atoms in the product, we can use a coefficient of three for the oxygen in the reactants, resulting in a net sum of three oxygen atoms on each side of the equation. And we just roll those up. So we now need to revisit the hydrogen atom. Now because this is a compound element on the reactant side, and that compound element now has a coefficient of three to, to maintain the balance with oxygen on both sides, it is going to increase the number of hydrogen atoms by a factor of three. If the reactants had a single hydrogen element, there would be no adjustments needed. However, because this substance is made up of two hydrogen elements to a single oxygen element, to man maintain the structure of this element, we will need to adjust for the additional hydrogen atoms on the left side. To reestablish ba a balance, we will need to have a total of six hydrogens on the left as well. And we do this by multiplying that atom by a coefficient of three, giving us six hydrogen atoms, both on the right and the left side of the chemical equation. All right, so with that being said, Let's go ahead and turn our attention to the cobalt oxide element here on the product side. Here we have two cobalt atoms and three oxygen atoms of the reactants. So everything is balanced. Because we see on the left that the number of atoms is equal to that on the right. So we can just throw one in front to establish its coefficient. And here is our balanced chemical equation with the coefficients placed in their appropriate positions. So let's move on to step three. Step three is where we will adjust the grouping coefficients. With the chemical equation now balanced, we need to verify that the coefficients are whole number integers. Through quick observation, we can conclude the coefficients 2, 3, 1, 3 are whole numbers and no adjusted adjustments are needed. Now for our final step, which is in reality just a safety check for us, we need to verify the mass balance of the atoms for each element. To do this, we just roll down each element as such as you see there right there on your screen. And we can verify that the number of atoms for each element is the same on both sides of the chemical equation. Now on the reactant side, we have two cobalt atoms. We have six hydrogen atoms and three oxygen atoms. On the product side, we have two cobalt atoms, six hydrogen atoms, and three oxygen atoms. So since there are the same number of atoms for each subject substance on both sides of the chemical equation, we can consider this 
the balanced chemical equation for this chemical reaction. Therefore, the correct answers of filling in the blank are the coefficients 2, 3, 1, and 3. So as you see, we rally back to that warning I kind of stated at the beginning of this session. For you to note all the directions and all the information that were given in the problem statement where this final line said coefficients can be used more than once. If that's the case, that means there may be two ones, there may be two two, there may not be a one, there may not be a two. In this case, there isn't a four. However, if we miss that line, we may try to fit four. We might see that there's two threes used in the balanced chemical equation, and because there's two threes, we might think we have it wrong. That will waste a lot of our time, we won't be confident moving forward, and we'll try to re-scratch that whole problem again. Step two does take some time. So, just be confident in yourself, be watching over all the information, all the data that we're given, and uh, move forward with confidence, knowing that you can do